Hey everyone, and welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. Today we're gonna to take a look at MetaZoo and ask the question, how do I play MetaZoo? Well, MetaZoo is a relatively easy game to learn, especially if you're familiar with other TCGs. It has pulled dynamics from many other games, as well as incorporating its own splash, fourth wall effects. Let's take a look at the basics before we hop into any gameplay related conversation. You are the caster. You control magical spells and forge contracts with beasts in hopes of reducing your opponent's life points from 1,000 to zero. Your magical spells live, of course, in your spellbook. This is just MetaZoo's fancy word for your deck. Your spellbooks must have at least 40 cards, which of course are thematically called pages. Like in Magic the Gathering, these pages, when cast, become permanent in the arena. They will stick around unless something interacts with them to remove them from play. Permanents can be beasties, auras, terras, and artifacts. Beasties and artifacts have life points and they can be attacked directly in order to be removed by your opponent. This is one of the major differences between Magic the Gathering and MetaZoo. Non-permanents, including spells and potions, offer single-use abilities. The majority of these spells and potions are played on your turn, but some have texts that allow them to be played on your opponent's turn in response to certain triggers like an attack being declared or a spell being contracted. The resource system for MetaZoo is supplied by Aura Pages. In order to cast the magical spells in your spellbook, you must pay the cost in the top right corner. This cost is paid by fatiguing or tapping the auras. When you cast a spell or beastie, the phrase MetaZoo uses is contracting. There are 10 different aura types coordinating to the page types. Air rods, for instance, cost one cosmic aura to play. The number to the right of that is its health or life points. You may only play one aura page per turn. In addition to aura pages, you may notice a similar looking page called Terra. These cards help to bring about the environment that the game is played in. If you're playing a cosmic theme, you may want to benefit from playing under stars, so you would include multiple star Terra in your deck. As long as the star Terra is in play, you will reap the fourth wall rewards of playing under the stars. Terra is shared in the middle of the arena. Any Terra you play activates the fourth wall symbols for all casters in the game. There are six Terra slots that are filled on a first serve basis starting with slot one through six. When a seventh Terra is contracted into the arena, it replaces the Terra in slot one. Additionally, fourth wall effects can be triggered by your physical location or the things around you. In my opinion, these things should be set up and agreed upon by the tournament hoster or your playgroup, much like agreeing to a power level in Magic the Gathering Commander. When playing MetaZoo for the first few weeks, you may want to have a cheat sheet next to you to help you learn the MetaZoo lingo, as I believe it's the biggest hurdle to understanding the game. Take a screenshot of the next screen to reference later in your gameplay experiences. Let's take a look at a card and see what else we need to learn about MetaZoo before we hop into some turn structures. Let's start with the Beastie card and learn the rest of the card setup. We'll look at our favorite card, Air Rods. We've talked about its name, its type, its life points. We know that it costs fatiguing one Cosmic Aura in order to play. Now let's take a look at Traits and Fourth Wall Effects. Traits are on the top left side of the artwork. In this case, Air Rods has the flight ability, so they may only be the target of a declared attack by other beasties with flight. There are 22 different traits in MetaZoo, so it might be a good idea to keep a cheat sheet linked on your phone. I'll include a link in the comment section to one for you. This can be tough to learn, but I would suggest starting with a friend and playing against two theme decks for a while. Learn the traits from two decks before you explore learning the other traits. It gets less complicated the more that you play. Beneath the trait section is the fourth wall effect zone. This is much easier to learn because the benefits are on the icons and the icons are on the Terra. The Terra bonuses on air rods are stars and meteor shower. If you're playing under stars or if you have the stars Terra page out, air rods gets plus 10 life points. If you're playing under a meteor shower, watch out for the falling asteroids, but air rods also gets 10 life points. These fourth wall effects do not stack on top of one another for the same effects. So if there are two star Terra in play, you still only benefit from one. However, if there were stars and a meteor shower, you would benefit from both. So that's traits and fourth wall effects. Now let's talk about abilities and attacks. Air rods has an additional fourth wall effect noted by the star in the top of the text field. 
If real clouds are within eyesight, this page gains 20 life points. This air rods deck is super powerful if you're playing outside at night under some clouds. The text in the blue oval is called power. Powers are just actions that you take on your turn. In order to use a power, you must fatigue the BC who is using it. In this case, you can fatigue air rods in order to reveal a page from your spell book. If it's a cosmic type beastie, you may awaken, think untap in Magic the Gathering, a beastie in the arena. Bookmark, which means draw one card and place air rods on the bottom of your spell book. In addition to this power, air rods has an attack. Attacks are pretty basic. You fatigue your beastie and attack an opponent, beastie or an artifact that you do not control. We will talk about combat later, but for now, let's talk about status effects on attacks. When air rods attacks, it obviously attacks with 20 damage. Additionally though, it has the paralyzed status symbol. When your opponent blocks with a beastie, they have to flip a coin. If heads, place the paralyzed indicator on their page. Paralyzed pages are considered to have no effect text and all their attacks become zero. They cannot attack or defend. Paralyzed only affects the beastie for the next turn after the turn it was placed. Lastly, it's important to note that the cosmic type is strong against spirit type beasties. When you have a strength advantage against another beastie, you deal an additional 20 damage to that beastie. Some attacks have additional strength indicators to the right of the attack. An example of this is the Flatwoods monster, which has an additional aura symbol to the right of its meteorite blast attack. This attack would gain plus 20 for the symbol on the right, plus an additional 20 because of the natural aura type advantage against spirit type beasties. So now that we have taken a look at the basic structure of the cards in MetaZoo, let's take a look at what your turns will look like. At the beginning of the game, you and your opponent will flip a coin to see who goes first. Then you each draw seven cards and are allowed to take a mulligan any number of times, each time receiving one less card to a minimum of one. There are just three phases in a MetaZoo turn, the start of turn, the action phase, and the end of turn. In the start of turn phase, you will bookmark or draw a page from your spellbook and awaken or untap any fatigued pages you control. Now you are in the action phase of your turn and you may do the following actions in any order. You can contract one aura page from your chapter into the arena awakened. Most aura pages have no cost. You can contract a Terra page from your chapter, and there's no limit per turn. You can contract a Beastie, Artifact, Spell, or Potion page. You can use abilities on your Beasties or Artifacts. You can move a face down Trap page, or you can declare an attack and resolve combat. Now let's take a look at combat. Combat begins whenever an attack is declared by fatiguing a Beastie. First, the beastie's controller selects an attack on the beastie and then a target for that attack. You may attack a caster, beastie, trap page that's not under a page in the arena, artifact, or equipment only if it specifies that it can be attacked. Then the opponent can declare any number of defenders by fatiguing those pages. You cannot defend with a page that has already been fatigued. The opponent selects only one attack on one of those defenders to use and that defender becomes the primary defender. If the opponent does not declare a defender, the original target of the attack becomes the primary defender, and the attack on the card must be declared. This does not cause that beastie to become fatigued. Now we can check which attack resolves first. This is where the first strike trait comes into play. If no one has first strike, then the attacker gets to resolve their attack first. If the defender has first strike, then the defender resolves its attack first. If both beasties have first strike, then the attacker flips a coin. Finally, we can resolve the attack. Here, Piazza Bird would get to resolve its attack first, because nobody has first strike and he is the attacker. First, you resolve the effects of the attack. In this case, Piazza Bird inflicts Mothman with a burn counter on their page. We will roll a d6 and put that number of counters on the burn indicator equal to the result of the roll, and there's some effects that happen later on with those burn counters. Then you apply the advantage damage modifiers and the terror bonuses. You deal the modified damage number to the defender. In this case, there's no modified attack, it's just the 75 base damage. Any page that has its life points reduced to zero is immediately destroyed and does not get to attack. Any remaining damage that cannot be allocated to a defender is allocated to the original target. 
If the defender is not destroyed, it counters with its own attack, dealing damage back to the attacker. Each combat is resolved individually, as it is an action and you may do any number of actions per turn. Damage that was dealt to a beastie during this turn will remain on that beastie until the beastie is destroyed or healed. And that's how combat works. The goal of the game, again, is to reduce your opponent's life total from 1000 to 0. Games usually take between 20 and 25 minutes for seasoned players, but you can expect this to take around 40 to 50 minutes if you're just starting to get the hang of the game. My suggestion for how to learn to play is to pick up two theme decks from the most recent set and play against your best friend. It's important to note that if you play with Cryptid Nation theme decks, do not use one of the Lightning and Dark and one of the Forest Flame and Frost, as Lightning and Dark are both much better than the other three. I would recommend picking up both Lightning and Dark or picking two of the other three. However, Nightfall themed decks are much higher power and closer to competitive decks and much more balanced. Great resources to go to are the official online rulebook. Ask questions in the main MetaZoo Discord channel or look at any of the various MetaZoo gameplay or strategy YouTube channels. Check back on this channel and hit subscribe so you can catch some gameplay videos and see the game played to help learn. The cheat sheets for the traits and strengths and weaknesses help a ton, so make sure you check those out at kitchentabletcg.com. If you're looking for a community that loves TCGs and wants to get some games in, talk about the market, or just spitball about life, consider joining Patreon and the Discord server as well, which helps support the channel and content like this. Have a great day, and remember to be kind to the people around you.